What is going on YouTube Nation? This is Darth Dividend. If you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. So tomorrow, I'm actually going to post my traditional IRA that I have set up. I wasn't happy with the quality that I made last night, so I'm going to have that posted for tomorrow. So I'm going to give you a tip real quick. I literally got the Pfizer vaccine, and I'm still tore up, as I sound like it, and I look like it. So people are asking me, what are good dividend growth stocks? And I always tell people, look in the store. Look at products that people buy in the store. So that's one of my tips. See what's out there. Look at their logos and do some digging. So we're going to go over these five dividend growth stocks. And by the way, we're almost at 10,000 subscribers. So I'll go over the distribution schedule of these dividend growth stocks and why they're in demand, and why dividend investors love them. So if you're new to this YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Smash that like button. Let's check these stocks out right now. So the first dividend growth stock I want to go over is Coca-Cola. So I actually bought Powerade because I'm beat up from the vaccine. That's a product that Coca-Cola acquired, uh, actually a company that they acquired, and they're sucking people up like crazy. They have a dividend yield of 2.96%, a PE ratio of 27.02, average volume 11.45 million, market cap 257.06 billion US dollars, year range is 52.28 to 67.20, its day range is 59.20 to 59.73, this previous close is 59.40. So I love Diet Coke. In my previous job, gosh, they had it in the fridge. I would always get Diet Coke. Um, I prefer it over Pepsi. Uh, Diet Pepsi actually, and they have a lot of products. So we're going to go over that real quick, and I'm going to go over their dividend history. Revenue wise, they're doing phenomenal. So let's go over some products. So the big thing is these guys acquire a lot of companies too. So they have Vitamin Water, they have Schweppes, they have Powerade right here, Minute Maid. Gold Peak Tea, Georgia, Fresca, that's pretty popular right now. Fanta, Fairlife, Dasani water that people buy. And that's another water, Steel, Body Armor. Remember, the big acquisition that they made was with Body Armor. And you see people buying Body Armor like crazy and drinking it out in the public. So that's another popular product they bring to the table. Sparks Root Beer and the sparkling water aquarius is another popular water brand so they have a lot of products out there that people buy now i'm going to show you their dividend history revenue wise are doing very well now let's go over their dividend history so check this out 2012 it was 26 cents 2013 it was eight cents 2014 it was 31 cents 2015 it was 33 cents 2016 it was 35 cents, 2017 it's 37 cents, 2018 it's 39 cents, 2019 it's 40 cents, 2020 it's 41 cents, 2021 it's 42 cents, and then it cracked 44 cents. So the payout ratio is 72%, number of dividend increases in the last five years is five, dividend growth in five years is 3.11%, not too bad. You bought one share, you made 176 with a 2.96% dividend yield. Boy, I'm trying to wing it with this, uh, with this uh, dealing with this vaccine. Let's check out the next dividend stock. And here's another dividend growth stock. Colgate Palm Olive, it's sitting at 75.48. It's not doing too hot against the S&P, which makes them an attractive dividend stock. Dividend yield is 2.49%, a PE ratio of 32.75%. Average volume, 4.04 .04 million. Market cap, 62.94 billion US dollars. Its year range is 72.20 to 85.61. Day range is 74.71 to 75.73. And its previous close is 74.90. Right here, I have their toothpaste. I use their products with their toothpaste. But they also bring other products out there that many people buy in the stores. Let's check that out. So here's Colgate, obviously, the toothpaste, Palm Olive, that's for cleaning products, Protex, Sanex, Soft Soap, Hills, Thorso, Speed Stick, Murphy's Oil Soap. A lot of people use that. I use that to clean my uh, coffee table. Ladies Speed Stick, Palm Olive, obviously, Irish Spring. Some people like that for soap. I uh, 
haven't used that in a while, but I may, you know, switch it up a little bit. Ajax, um, Tynosol, Axion, Fluffy is another one that I see a lot that people buy in the store. And Fabuloso is another one I see a lot of people buy in the store. So check that out. That's the type of products they bring to the table. A lot of people like those products. Um, I see a lot of Irish Spring and Palm Isle of dish soap. These two right here are huge. And obviously, uh, the other one is Speed Stick and Colgate. So I see a lot of people buying that in the store. That's what I saw today. So I wanted to reflect on that. A lot of you guys, like I said, you guys are like, so what are what are what are good stocks to buy? I say, well, see what you know people have in their shopping carts at the grocery store because they're in demand and they're making revenue and they're hiking their dividends, these companies. So let's check that out. Let's start in 2013, it was 34 cents, 2014 it was 36 cents, 2015 it was 38 cents, 2016 it was 39 cents, 2017 it was 40 cents. 2018, it's 42 cents. 2019, it was 43 cents. 2020, 44 cents. 2021, 45 cents. And then 2022, 47 cents. So the payout ratio is 61%. Number of dividend increases in the last five years is five. Its revenue is going up. I just want to confirm that if you want to check it on Macro Trends or any other site. Annualized dividend growth in five years is 2.87%. So if you bought one share, you made 188 with a 2.51% dividend yield. People buy this in the store all the time. Remember, people are buying their products. Again, this is not financial advice for entertainment purposes only. Disclaimer in the description, but if people are buying their products, that's a good thing. And if they're in demand, they usually hike their dividend. Let's check out the next dividend stock. Here's a dividend growth stock that slowly is making a comeback, but it's not doing too well against the S&P. Has a dividend yield of 2.71%. That is Johnson and Johnson sitting at 166.66. PE ratio 24.23. Average volume 7.71 million. The market cap is 438.65 billion US dollars. Year range is 155.72 to 18669. Its day range was 162.83 to 167.10. And its previous close was 163.33. Let's see, I'm recovering. From the Pfizer vaccine. And what did I buy? Tylenol. That is a huge product that Johnson & Johnson carries. Nice thing about Tylenol, unless we have liver issues, is it's good for pain. People try to avoid non-steroid anti-inflammatories because there's always a risk of a GI bleed. There's always a risk for um, impaired kidney function or hurting your kidneys with a lot of products that you take. And this is good. I, I just took a thousand milligrams. I'll probably be the only sober person watching the Brown Steelers game tonight. Uh, but we'll see what happens with the Browns. You never know with these guys. But this is what they have. I mean, you know, this is just one of many. They got the baby shampoo. They're, there's a discussion of them splitting and branching off and doing, you know, um, one of them's with cosmetics and the other thing, I'll go over that real quick. This is on marketwatch.com. J&J &J announced in November that it is planning to split into two publicly traded companies. This is the announcement in uh, 2021. One focusing on consumer health and the other focusing on prescription drug and medical device businesses. So, Tylenol, that's a huge popular brand that they bring to the table. So the consumer health and the prescription drug and medical device businesses are going to be very strong. So both of them, I think, will be in the long run strong. Again, again this is not financial advice for entertainment purposes, only disclaimer in the description. I think both of them will do phenomenal. So let's go over their dividend history. Let's start in 2011. It was J and J was 54 cents in 2011. It jumped up to 57. Then 2012, it jumped up to 61. 2013, it jumped up to 66. 2014, it jumped up to 70. 2015, it jumped up to 75. 
2016 it jumped up to 80 cents 2017 it jumped up to 84 cents 2018 it jumped to 90 cents 2019 it jumped to 95 cents then 2020 it jumped up to 101 to 106 and then in 2022 it jumped to 113 so payout ratio is 45 percent number of dividend increases in the last five years is five annualized dividend growth in five years is 5.99 percent if you bought one share, you made 452 with a 2.77% dividend yield. So even if these guys somewhat split up, I'm not too worried about these guys. And I may buy both of them because I think both of them are very strong. So that's one stock that I'm highly considering buying in the long run. Once I get a little bit more conservative with buying dividend stocks and my revenue starts going up, I'm going to start buying dividend growth stocks like these guys. Let's jump to the next dividend stock. Next dividend stock is Campbell's Soup. Not feeling good? Buying Chunky, Campbell's Chunky Soup. So I'm eating that probably in the next 15 minutes after this video. Sitting at 49.41 with a 3.00% dividend yield. PE ratio 19.71. Average volume 2.51 million. Market cap 14.85 billion US dollars. Year range is 39.76 to 51.94. Day range is 48.59 to 49.49. And its previous close is 48.53. These guys bring a lot of products to the table. So Wikipedia makes this a lot easier. So right here, Campbell's Chunky Soup. They have SpaghettiOs. They have sauces. V8. Pepperidge Farm. So that it was acquired by Campbell's in 1961. Pace Foods was acquired by Campbell's in 1995. Swanson, Prego, Snyder's Lance, and Late July Snacks. So that's very prop, uh, popular. So the big thing with Snyder's is the Lance Crackers and Cookies, uh, Kettle Potato Chips, Archway Cookies are very uh, popular. Don't forget Swanson, like during, uh, you know, a lot of the big things with, um, you know, the holidays, that's a big uh, popular brand. So, and they have a lot of stuff, goldfish crackers, harvest wheat. I mean, a lot of stuff that Pepperidge uh, Farms uh, is just so powerful and people buy these products every day at the store. So I'll go over their revenue because I really haven't uh, went over Campbell Soup as much. And a lot of people ask me, you know, with Campbell Soup, how are they doing? So I'll go over their revenue and their dividend history. So this is in millions US dollars. 2016, it was 7961 2017, it was 5837 2018, it was 6615 2019, it was 8107 2020, it was 8691 then 2021, it was 8,476. And then 2022, it was 8,562. So from 2016 to 2022, there is an increase in revenue. Now we'll go over their dividend history. Let's start in 2011. They were 29 cents. Then 2013, they cracked 31 cents. But for a while, it took a little bit for them to hike their dividend. 2016, it was 35 cents. And then 2021, it cracked 37 cents. So there's a little slow dividend growth, but again, people buy their products like crazy. Number of dividend increases in the last five years is one. Payout ratio is 52%. Annualized dividend growth in five years is 1.41%. So if you bought one share, you made 148 with 3.05% dividend yield. Let's jump to the final dividend stock. And the final dividend stock is Procter & Gamble. Gee, what did I buy at the store today? Tide. So a lot of people use Tide pods. Some people decide to eat them, which doesn't make any sense. But they're sitting at 136.69. The dividend yield of 2.67%, a PE ratio of 23.55. Average volume 6.24 million. Market cap 326.24 billion US dollars. Year range is 129.50 to 165.35. Day range is 135.24 to 137.07. And its previous close is 135.73. The revenue-wise are doing phenomenal. They have so many products out there. Toothpaste, 
you name it. You see the PNG label at the stores. I'm not going to go into detail because they're just so big. Now I'm going to go over their dividend history. Check out this dividend growth. Let's start in 2010. It was 48 cents. 2011 it went to 53. 2012 it jumped to 56. 2013 it cracked 60. 2014 it jumped 64. 2015 it cracked to 66. Then 2016 it was 67 cents. Then 2017 it was 69 cents. Then 2018 it was 72 cents. Then 2019 it was 75 cents. Then 2020 it was 79 cents. Then 2021 it was 87 cents. And then to 2022 of 91 cents. So the payout ratio is 63%. Number of dividend increases in the last five years is five. Annualized dividend growth in five years is 6.02%. So if you bought one share, you made 365 to two point, with a 2.69% dividend yield. So I tried to wing it with this. Um, Dealing with this vaccine, it's tearing me up. So let me know what you think of this video. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so don't miss future videos. Tomorrow you will see my traditional IRA that I made and the ETFs that I made and uh, that I cr um. So tomorrow you will see my traditional IRA I made with my ETFs that I have in the portfolio. So I, again. I wanted to edit it. I didn't like the way it looked. So I'm going to go in depth tomorrow. So make sure you hit that notification bell if you after you subscribe if you're new to this channel. Take care and have a good one.